So hello everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for taking your time out and joining this session. Uh, I'd like to thank Hacker Earth for uh, organizing this uh, machine learning webinar and getting us all in. Thanks, Hacker Earth. So today, uh, uh, the primary topic is unlock the untapped with Watson Discovery Service. So as you can see over here, and my name is Shubhradeep. So I work as a data scientist, uh, uh, developer advocate, and a cognitive solution architect uh, for IBM. Now, uh, to get started, so, so there was a time when uh, businesses were in need of data, uh, ideally to, 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 to derive insights. Uh, every business wanted data, and the data was not available. Uh, but today, the situation has completely changed, right? So we are in an era where business is facing an explosion of data, and that fuels the ability to rapidly make decisions, quickly adjust direction, and ultimately increase the velocity. Now, uh, so, so, so if we, if we, if we, So, so I think someone has mentioned that the audio is not clear, so I'm getting it uh, clarified with the organizers. Okay. So I think uh, so. So so I think it's an it's an individual issue. So kindly get it rectified. Uh, okay. So let's get started. So uh, so so as I was saying that there was one point of time where businesses wanted to derive insights, but there was no appropriate data available. And today we are in an era where uh, there is explosion of data, and 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 that is how. Businesses are trying this, uh, trying, trying to get get the data and derive insights from it. However, a pervasive challenge remains: the unstructured content. The analysis of structured content, numbers, dates, organized grouping of words, which tell us what is happening, has been largely conquered with traditional analytic systems. However, the analysis of unstructured content presents continuing challenges. But it's precisely unstructured content like product reviews, social media uh, interactions, and images that tell us why things are happening. For example, I may know that my business is getting a tremendous amount of reviews for a newly launched product. All of that interest must be a great thing, right? But actually, uh, it is a text in those reviews that tell me why there is a lot of interest. Maybe people are loving it, or maybe the product design doesn't meet the expectation of the customer. So the customer is probably putting in his or her queries. So what I need is an engine that will score those reviews to reveal insights for my next set of decisions. So that is where the discovery service comes into picture. So let's get into the core of the service. Now you can see my slides that uh, what Watson discovery service provides and what Watson discovery service is, 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 is having in it. Now, Watson Discovery Service tackles the challenge which I mentioned in my, in, in, in my previous slide. It takes it head on. It lets developers rapidly build cognitive apps that extract value from structured and unstructured data with the Watson algorithms which, which, which lie behind. 
Now the developers actually need to spend less time cleaning up the data and also in acquiring the data and they can spend the, 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 the time focused on analyzing and, and, and deep exploring it. Now the discovery service actually allow easy ingest and, 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 and it can normalize enormous amount of unstructured both proprietary and public available, I mean publicly available content. Even if you have little or no systems engineering or probably machine learning skills, still this service can be consumed by you and, 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 and you can perhaps start uh, delivering insights which uh, which probably would have taken uh, months for a machine learning expert to build a system and then deliver it. So that's available right in your fingertips. You can exploit third-party pre-enriched uh, uh, pre, uh, pre news data to enable highly targeted search and trend analysis apply natural language processing and, uh, and artificial intelligence capabilities to go far beyond simple keyword searches. You can perform multiple query types, uh, something like Boolean, filters, aggregation to derive the discovery patterns, the trends and the answers. And the best part here is that you can easily add this Watson discovery service to your existing application. Now, how can you do it? You can do it via the via the SDK, the APIs, as well as uh, the, the 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 going into the Bluemix platform. You just provision the service, which anyway I'll show it to you. Provision the service, and once you provision the service, you've got the API endpoints. Just include those API endpoints in your application, and you're good to get started. But what is the cream of the service, right? The cream of the service is the alchemy, the inbuilt. Uh, alchemy language APIs, which are which are present inside, and and, and it's powering the, the 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 derivation of the insights. It includes a document conversion API, which takes your unstructured and semi-structured data and 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 makes it into a format from where you can actually derive insights. And last, we also have uh, a, a, a a SaaS ID called uh, Watson Knowledge Studio, which can be used to build custom models. So, so you have got all the three capabilities available with you. Now you can take all the three and 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 start building some awesome apps. Now, uh, what are the situations probably where you would uh, use the service? So, so, so it can be like adding a customer service representative in, in, in delivering answers to complex customer questions. So let's say uh, you have a customer service team and the customer service team is probably trying to deliver uh, specialized answers. And now if those specialized answers is not made available to him at his fingertips, it would be very hard for him or the time required to go derive the answers and come back would be too long. So that particular part can be easily automated for a customer service representative. It can help the researchers understand insights from vast number of research documents, industry journals and news content. So as a researcher, an individual has to uh, remain on top of his content but as you know, with uh, data explosion, uh, it is pretty hard for an individual to grasp everything. So if you have caught your content, which is probably in the form of journals and liar things, and you have got uh, the, 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 a, a service which actually ingests the, the live news and liar data, then you can amalgate them and use the discovery service to derive insights from it. So that helps a researcher to stay top of or stay on the top of his research. The, the, the other thing which one can do is that uh, it can actually combine with the Watson conversation service, which is uh, you can which is primarily used for building chatbots. 
So you can actually create a chatbot and WhatsApp discovery service can sit behind and power the chatbot with this particular thing. You can convert your, uh, so, so getting back, you, in, in the ingestion section, you can see you can convert and enrich your document and you can clean and normalize your document. I'll go and talk detail about what is enriching, what is normalization, and I go and insert. The third bigger part is storage. So it allows you to store your own content privately into the cloud. Query. Now this is the important part because why am I storing the data? I'm primarily storing the data so that I can query it and I can derive insights from it. So 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 there is a, a so you can build your own query model. You can you can write your own queries and and, and derive the insights. Last is obviously you need some actionable insights. So, 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 so as I was talking about uh, in my previous uh, 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 slide, that that let's say if you are a researcher and you are trying to derive insights, then you need to. Uh, so as you as you design your application, you would say that okay, these are my actionable insights which the application should give, and uh, and, and 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 that once you once you classify them. You you make your queries accordingly, and then you start uh, getting your uh, answers based on the set of actionable insights. So this is basically what lies. Uh, uh, what, uh, I mean, what what lies in the pipeline of this whole uh, whole whole discovery service. So you push in your data, you define the enrichment or or or, or normalize the data. Uh, which again, some part is already predefined and and some part is already taken care of. So so a lot, not many things needs needs to be done by you. Then there is a storage uh, section where you can store your documents. You can query them and you see the results. Okay. So uh, so this brings us to uh, to, to 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 the exploration part of the service. So so if if I if I uh, if, if, if you are with me till here, then you can see over here is that I've shown you a, an image like how the service should look when you provision it. But let me just go back and, 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 and talk about it in a bit more detail. So I will pause my, uh, my presentation here and go to my screen. So you can see over here that uh, in, the, in my, so I think there's a bit of delay in transition. Now it is up. Okay, so this is practically how your uh, uh, application should look like uh, in, in, in Bluemix uh, uh, cloud platform. So in, in, in this you have got all your applications. I have got quite a, a pretty, uh, pretty long list of applications. And then you have got all your services. So similarly, once you uh, create a service, it will be listed out here. So if you've created a discovery service, it will be listed some, something like here. Okay, uh, so so where do we find this discovery service? So if I go to catalog, uh, let me just go to the catalog and show it to you. So so this is the whole. Uh, I hope, uh, yeah. So that so there is a min minor delay in the transition. So 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 if you see, this is the Bluemix catalog. And in the Bloomings catalog, if you come on your left hand side, if you if you will see that there is some there is that is a that is a section called uh, services. In that there is Watson. Okay, so you click on Watson, you whole set of Watson services. So in that what we what we want to focus today is discovery. So once you go and click on discovery, uh, you would precisely see that. Uh, the discovery services uh, shown to you, something like the like the screen which I have shown here in my presentation. Okay, there is again uh, there is a minor delay in transition. So okay, so yes, yeah, service would something. Would, would, would be some looking something like this and and once you go inside the service so you can actually I'll just go back hold on there is a bit of 
Okay. Okay. Right. So, so this is how your service would look, and you you would see that this is something which I have actually put on my slide, and this will have the discovery tooling intended use, uh, how it works, and 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 everything listed over here. And then if you see over here, there is something called developer resources. Uh -huh. In that, there is documentation, demo. So if you want to see the demos, see the documentation, you can go and click on them. Then there is something called uh, service credentials. So once you provision service, you'll see this. So I will not click on the service credentials primarily because that will show my credentials. And then let's say you have uh, uh, you have created an application and you have connected your application to uh, the service, then you can actually see that your application is listed over here. So, so, so this is uh, basically the thing. Okay. So I just go back and uh, so, so yeah. So once you click on the service, it will give you an option to create the service. So you can go ahead and create it. So once you create it, you will get this particular screen and in this, in this particular screen and in this particular screen, you have got something as launch tool. So once you click on this launch tool, you will get uh, an area like this. Now, what is this, right? So, so let me just go and talk about it. Okay. Now, if you are seeing over here, then there are actually four blocks, right? The first block is create a data collection. This is precisely where you go and create your own private repositories. And then there is something which is called pre-enriched data. What's the news? So, uh, so just to give you a brief about what Watson Discovery News is, so Watson Discovery News is a public data set that has been pre-enriched uh, with quality insights. And who has pre-enriched it? Enriched it? It has been pre-enriched by the Watson team, and is also included uh, as as you as you as, as you as as you are seeing also included as part of this repository. You can. Uh, uh, use this public unstructured data set to query for insights that you can integrate into your application. So Watson Discovered News is a data set of primarily English language news sources that is updated continuously with approximately 3 lakh news articles and blogs added every day from around 10 lakh sources. So this is precisely uh, the 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 so if you want to find something in real time, this is uh, the rep your repository or your collection, I would say, to go ahead and search. So as you are seeing, everything is named here as a collection. So Watson News is a collection which is pre enriched so, so you can go ahead, you can see the configurations, and you can start creating it. Similarly, what I have done is that I have created two more repositories. One is for depression, one is for diabetes. Let me just go inside one of them. Uh, okay. Now uh, the, the 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 key thing here is that uh, you can see that uh, yeah. So as the as 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 the as, as the screen has come up, you can see that it talks about the collection status. It talks about the collection ID. Talks about the configuration ID. Talks about the environment ID. So all these things are definitely uh, required for making query because if you are trying, or so let's say I'm trying to create an app and I'm trying to uh, call the depression collection to derive my insights, I need to have uh, number one this collection ID. So this collection ID uniquely identifies this particular collection. Uh, now, now the other part here is that uh, this particular section, right? In this particular section, you can actually see that on your right hand side, it says about add data to this collection. 
Now, what is add data to this collection? So let's say you've got PDFs, you've got HTMLs, you've got Word documents. All you can do is add drag and drop over here. Now, just to just to just just to uh, uh, keep you all informed, it is not that you have to drag and drop and and, and push all your uh, documents one by one. There's a data crawler available. Again, I'm going to talk about it in some time. But let me just talk about something more interesting. So if you come over in the in the screen, and if you are seeing a screen in your left hand side, you'll see that there is something called configuration. And this is something which I've created, which is like a new configuration. So so there will be a default configuration available for each uh, each each collection. Now all you need to do is that you need to go ahead and and create your own configuration if you feel that that is your need. Now, how do you understand it is your need, or or or, or you don't need it? Now, 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 what is inside that? So, first and foremost thing, it has got three sections, right? One part is okay. I think the transition has happened. Yeah. So, so the first part is convert. The second part is enrich, and the third part is normalize. So now, if you are planning to convert your PDF to JSON, and 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 and, and and, and collide things. Uh, you can see on my screen. I have done. I've taken a PDF and I converted it into a particular format. So, 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 so then this is the section that you go ahead and do it. Now there is something called enrich. So, so, so one key thing that you need to know over here is that your uh, uh, you you already have default enrichment, which is done by uh, the uh, which is done by the service itself, but let's say you want to go ahead and change your uh, uh, your, your your thing, then then you actually have got uh, got several uh, se several things which you can use to enrich it. So 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 what are these particular things? So 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 there is entity extraction, keyword extraction, taxonomic classification, concept insights, relation extraction, and sentiment analysis. And there is something called emotion analysis as well. So, 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 so you can actually further augment your documents by adding enrichment to the other things. So, basically, the text field of your ingested document will already be uh, enriched. But if you want to go ahead and 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 and, and, and enrich other uh, fields as well, then this is a way to go ahead and do it. Similarly, uh, if you see over here, there is something called normalize. So what is normalized, right? Uh, so, uh, so, so this is basically the last step of uh, your configurations. So in the last step of configuration, what you do is that in the in this particular section, you can actually move, merge, copy, and uh, and uh, and remove fields. Uh, you have got empty fields. If you have got some empty fields in your document, you can actually delete them. And, and 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 make your document uh, 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 more relevant uh, when 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 it gets processed. So 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 practically uh, that is the use of normalize. So uh, so you use uh, this, basically these three tabs to create your configuration. Once you have done your configuration, there is an apply and save button which is below. You just click that apply and save, and once you do it, you are done. Your configuration is done. Uh, so now what? So once your configuration is done, you are back to the same page. Now what has to be done, right? So uh, so once your collection is ready, there is a, a a small link over here, which says uh, query this collection, which is on your right hand side top, uh, which will which will actually uh, 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 give you a IDE where you can go and write your queries. So without wasting much time, let me go inside that. Now, if you come over here, what it says is that it has actually taken. Uh, I mean, it has generated a set of queries for you. So this document, when it's, once it gets, uh, so this collection, one once it get en gets enriched with the documents that you've provided to it, it will come up with all the four uh, 
the boxes that you can see. So in that it will have the top keywords, the general sentiment, which is 100% negative, the top entities, uh, which you can see over here, which is like uh, depression, APA, anal, a lot of things, the content hierarchy. Uh, so how is the hierarchy? So it's health and fitness disorders, mental disorder. So you can see the last one over here. It actually says about that health and fitness, then disorders, mental disorders, depression. Then there are uh, some related concepts as well. So this is what the concept taking service does: is attachment in adults, attachment measures, attachment parenting, attachment theory. So it actually primarily builds that uh, enriched uh, query and, and gives it to you. Now if you're trying to write your own query, you can actually go over here and you can actually uh, type your own query. You can, uh, so here you can enter a keyword for a query. You can enter a number. So let's say you want to see the first three results. So you can give the counting as count as three. You can narrow your query. So, 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 so many of you who probably have worked with databases or with uh, with some amount of data, uh, you probably or, or or probably some amount of languages either in data science, you probably would know what is aggregation and all that things are, and aggregation filtering and all that things are. So this is pretty much similar to that. So you can actually, based on uh, a particular sentiment, so here there is an example which is given like, I want to filter all the positive, sent or, or, or probably all the titles or all the documents with uh, positive sentiment. So give something like enriched underscore text dot doc sentiment dot type positive, which will actually give you all the documents which are positive. So the sentiment of the content inside that should have a positive sentiment. So that is what gets shown over there. Similarly, you can do a group query with aggregation, and then you can actually do an offset, and then you, you mention over here the fields to return, and other things. So basically, once you uh, probably fill in this thing, run the query, so, so let me say like, uh, Depression. Let me say simple, simply depression, and do the simplest thing possible over here. So it will go ahead and find you the result, which is actually the document itself, and then you can have a query created for you. Now, now that there are two ways of doing it, you can actually go ahead, go directly to the APIs, which are again part of the documentation, and start writing your own uh, queries. Or you can actually come to this tooling and try to write your queries, see the results, and rectify or modify accordingly. So that's that is basically your choice. Okay. So uh, I think from here, I'll just go back and and show you like uh, like how a query actually looks like. I mean, uh, what is a what is a query and how it looks like. So. Let me just uh, show you that. Okay. So now, if you are, uh, if you are seeing my screen, you'll see that I am showing you a elongated sentence. This is nothing but an API call. And what is an API call all about? This API call is all about uh, doing a nested aggregation and returning the reply. So next, I'm going to show you a simple application. Uh, which actually uses this query to find out some results. But let's first try to understand what the query is all about. Now in this query, if you see, it actually calls the API. Then uh, purposefully, I have removed the EID, which is the environment ID, CID, which is the collection ID, and, uh, and, and the basic authentication is, part, is, is sent as part of the token. And, uh, and and if you can see over here is here I've given a version to it, and after version I have written something like uh, like like uh, query equal to title colon IBM. So what I'm trying to do over here, so I, I'm trying to find all the 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 
the, the links which are available and ingested by the news aggregator which has got a title IBM. Now what I'm trying to do over here is that I'm written a nested query which actually finds that on that the articles which have IBM in them who are the persons associated with it. So let's say I have I have made a query got IBM and in that sentence or in that link whether there is a entity of type person and who is that person. So if I can find out that then I can actually write a, write an app which can give me the visualization of the connected people or the people or or, or uh, to this particular uh, 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 context which is IBM based on the 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 ingested documents who are the individuals connected with it. So if that is what you are trying to find out, then this is how you write it. Now you might ask me like uh, why I have given a nested query. And then in the best query, I have given a filter, uh, which is part of the complete aggregation. So, well, the difference over here is that if I have given a filter outside, it would, it would basically give me all the documents. But at this point of time, I'm not in need of the documents, but I'm, I'm only in need of the titles. And in that title, who are the, the I mean, which are the entities which are of type person. So that is basically what I'm trying to derive and which I'm trying to show. Now, now if you are, uh, if you are, uh, I mean, at this point, if you are still with me, you would ask me like, why the count is zero over here? Now the count is primarily zero over here because I have given a nested count. So when you say count over there, it would, probably, it, it would actually bring out the number of documents. But again, I'm, I'm not interested in the documents. I want all the links which has got a particular title and in that title who are the people involved. So, so who are connected to that particular uh, uh, news link, who are, who, uh, who are the individuals. So every news link comes with a title. So in that title I'm trying to find out who are the people involved. Now without wasting much time, uh, let me go and show you uh, the application itself. So, so if you can see over here, uh, the the query that I was talking about. So what it would do? Uh, it would actually go and find out that on your on your right hand side you can see that there are a lot of articles which has been ingested by the news aggregator. And all I'm trying to find out is all the titles. In those titles, who are the individuals mentioned over here? So if you can see over here, IBM. IBM has been linked with a lot of people. Watson, Aiton, Trump, uh, Ginny Rometty, Einstein, uh, uh, Karan Bajwa, and a and, and lot of news have gone inside, which has been ingested by IBM. And, and, and if you can search Watson and Einstein, you would probably see some more news. But let me just click on uh, Watson and try to see whether there is something, whether it can actually find out some, some more stuffs. Interestingly, yes. So you can see over here, uh, when, act when I actually clicked on Watson, it actually did a recursive call to, the, to my query. And now with the keyword Watson, I'm trying to find out in a similar way who are the, uh, I mean, which are the entities or who is involved, who, as I mean, as I, uh, uh, so my meaning over here is that of the type entity person. So if I'm trying to find out the person, I to find it out over here. So this is how it does. So similarly, if I click on this thing and Einstein, So you can see over here that based on the the, 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 the the title Einstein, there are a lot of other articles which, which are available. In that, these are the individuals it was able to find out. Now, uh, so, so this, this particular 
application which you can see right over here in, in, in front of you. This has been written in, in, in Python and uh, it actually calls the Watson APIs. Now, uh, the discovery APIs in form of the aggregation query that I have just shown to you, it actually makes a call to that. Then it gets the results and is actually showing it using a uh, visualization library. So that is basically what it does. Okay. So this is basically a very simple uh, example, but I would suggest you to go ahead, dive into the documentation, dive into the various prospects which which can be used to build, uh, which you can use and build your application, and 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 that way. Uh, I think you can have, have a more fruitful exploration of the Watson Discovery Service. Now, there will be some amount of learning that you need to do, and that learning will be part of how you go ahead and write an aggregation query, how you go ahead and write a filter query, how you write a nested query combining the aggregation and the filter, how do you define the counts, whether the count should be outside, whether the count should be inside, what is exactly what you are looking for. Are you looking for uh, documents or are you looking for specific text? Are you looking for a particular entity? So all those queries which you probably might have at this point of time will get answered as you go and dive into the documentation. So, uh, so with that, I would probably go back to the service again and I would uh, I will show you the the basic way, right? Uh, so 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 similarly, what I have done is that I have actually created another repository. Now, if you see over here, I have created a uh, okay. I have created a repository called diabetes diet. Now, what do I do with this diabetes diet? So, with the diabetes diet, I've actually pulled and uh, I've actually pushed in two set of documents. So you can see that the document count is one. Now, as I was talking some, uh, I mean, uh, a few minutes back, that there is some way you can, you did not go ahead and drag and drop it. You can actually use the API or the crawling engine. So, so there is a, a data crawler which lets you to automate the upload of content to the discovery database. Because, because primarily, as 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 a as a developer or as a data scientist, you probably did not want to upload each and every document manually, right? So we have got a, a data crawler, which is a command line tool that will help you to take your documents from repositories where they reside. It can be like file share, it can be database, it can be a, a, a SharePoint, uh, and you can push them to the cloud. And, and, and they can be consumed by the discovery service. So, okay. So, so when to use the data crawler? The data crawler should be used if you want to have a managed upload of a significant number of files from a remote system, or you want to extract content from a supported uh, repository, such as a DB2 database. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 so, 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 so basically, how to use the data crawler? So there are a couple of steps. So configure the discovery service, download and install the data crawler. Again, the data crawler is available uh, in, in the primary uh, landing page itself of, of discovery. You can go ahead and, 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 and download it. Once you download and install it, connect the data crawler to your content and configure the data crawler to connect to the discovery service. And, 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 and once you do that, so one, your, 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 your data crawler is connected to your content and the data crawler is connected to a discovery service. So it sits in between and it takes the data from your repository and pushes it in, into the discovery service. So that is practically how it goes ahead and, 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 and fulfills the purpose. And, and, and you did not go ahead and, and, and upload your data manually, right? Okay. So, so I believe uh, uh, in context of discovery service, I think uh, uh, so, so I think we are uh, probably talking it for the first time uh, in a webinar uh, from India. And, 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 and that is the reason I, I want to cover all the primary aspects because 
rest of the things which are which are very nitty gritty to discovery service you can anyway shoot me a query or you have the documentation you can you can you can uh, you can ask it you can uh, find all your answers there then there is a support service available you can shoot them a query where somebody specialized with the discovery service will answer your queries now uh, with that I would uh, actually go to the last part of my today's session is questions I will take a few questions and then probably okay okay Okay. Uh, uh, so someone has already asked me why the count is zero. I think I have already mentioned it, right? Said uh, the count is primarily zero because I'm not looking for documents. I'm finding for the in for internal query. Okay. Uh, okay. Huh. So, so I think Shubankar is asking me that. Can you please show a demo? So, Shubankar, uh, as I say to you, that every service comes with a demo. So, you can, as I showed you in the landing screen, there is something called demo. Let me just go back and show it to you. Uh, let me just the slides. Okay. So, 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 so to answer Shubankar's query, so if you are able to see my screen. Uh -huh. You can see over here there's something called developer resources. In the developer resources, you can go and uh, see that there is something called demo. Just click, click the demo and see it all by yourself. Okay, uh, so 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 I think there is one more question which says that. Okay, now I'm getting a lot of queries around. Uh, Around which all languages can be used. So, so, uh, so this query comes from Pradyumna Sripad. So, Pradyumna Sripad asked me a question that may I know what are the languages used other than Python? So, Pradyumna, any language that supports uh, REST APIs can be used. Uh, so. Om is asking me how much accurate considering context understanding. So I Om accuracy is a really relative term, so I leave it up to you. Uh, so uh, what are the machine learning capabilities inbuilt? Uh, that is what Rahul is asking me. So I would say Rahul C. Uh, a service which can take your unstructured data and can 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 convert it into a format which is uh, readable by a machine and from where you can derive insights is basically and 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 based on your data it keeps on uh, increasing its accuracy of understanding and and replying so basically a lot of the capabilities in and around ai and machine learning is present in it uh, due to proprietary reasons, I may not be able to tell you the exact algorithms and other things. Uh, so somebody is asking me like, how does the unstructured data gets created actually? So Asim, Nara, and Pandey. So basically, uh, Asim, uh, see, uh, if you are uh, writing your uh, uh, writing your writing a research paper, you would probably type it in in, in your Word doc. And then you would probably put it into a PDF format, or as you as you send it. So as you as you write down in a, probably a research paper, it is in a particular format. So, but if you do a plain search on top of it, you will not get all your answers. The contextual answers would probably uh, come from a service which is something like Discovery. So basically, we, the human being, and at some point of time, even the machines, create unstructured data okay now so somebody is asking me can I use IBM Watson in my sentiment analysis project so Shankar Jha is asking me this question so Shankar please go ahead 
and use it. I mean, you can definitely use it. Okay. So Sudhanshu Pandey is asking me, uh, sir, for a novice, could you suggest few resources for mastering the basics of mass machine learning? I think this is a bit of out of context over here, Sudhanshu. Uh, basically, all you need to do is you have got very, very, very search engines. You need to go and search into it. Other than that, if you see the services that we have, that don't need actually a very uh, deep specialization in uh, machine learning. So you can use them as it is. Uh, okay, somebody is asking me in the back end, are you using any Python package like an, an NLTK? Okay, Shubra is asking me. So Shubra, so these are proprietary things which I may not be able to tell you. Uh, okay, so Rahul Meher is asking me, can we have REST API for other application to integrate? So if I understand you, Rahul, so if uh, if what 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 I'm trying to understand over here is that if you have got an application which also exposes REST API, is something like that. Or is it like that, that whether your application can consume the REST APIs? So either way, all that you want, all that you need to know over here is that if your application is in a position to consume REST APIs, you can use it. If your application is in a position to combine and consume REST APIs, then also you can use it. So all you need to know is how you go ahead and, 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 and consume REST APIs. Basically that. Uh, okay. Uh, Thiru Malesh is asking me that are there any open source projects based on I? Uh, uh, okay, based on IBM Bluemix, on text analysis. Okay. So so his query is probably is there any open source project uh, which consumes probably the Watson APIs and does some amount of text analysis. If that is the query, then uh, there are a lot of open source project and our Alchemy API, we, so us 12 Alchemy API uh, and the current Watson natural language understanding, all of them, both of them has got the capability to ingest uh, and analyze uh, uh, your, your text. So basically, there are a lot of open source projects which are available. Go to our GitHub repos and you'll find them. Okay. Okay. Uh, so somebody has asked me that, uh, so the licenses are based on embedded or session based. So Rahul, all you need to do is, I think Rahul, uh, the, so, 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 so all you need to do is, go and create your Bluemix account. Once you create your Bluemix account, you automatically get access to all the APIs. Now, if you are looking from a enterprise perspective, then uh, you can contact our sales team and they'll be able to better guide you. Uh, but as a developer, you can basically go ahead, provision the APIs and start using them. Okay, so how does Watson manage to find context in data? I think that, that is probably the last question that I'll be taking today, uh, since we have uh, taken a lot of questions. So, so the last question which I can see over here is that how does Watson manage to find the context in the data? So basically, Watson in 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 uh, has got its own algorithms. So, so the algorithms which you can see over here, I mean, just, just to be precise, the Alchemy APIs which you can see over here, they actually, when you ingest the data, it actually runs on top of the data. Once it runs on top of the data, based on the various uh, various requirements and various, uh, so the way you have modeled it, it actually tries and grabs the data. Okay, so I think, that's it for today. I would like to thank each and everyone out here who have been here till this particular point of time. Thank you very much. And last but not the least, I'd like to thank Hackerat for bringing us all together and, 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 and making this session an awesome one. Thank you, Hackerat.